welcome back to Justice for Channel AC2 in Formula 197 and round 13 brings us to the historic Monza circuit, the home of the Italian Grand Prix, which has hosted the event in every single World Championship season, apart from one, 1980, where Imola stepped in while Monza made safety improvements. With the gap up to 11 points in the championship, but with six rounds still to go, it could still go either way for us this season. So, what happens? if we fail to win the championship. Well, no matter what, the next Justice 4 season will take place in the dreaded Formula 1 98. Also, whether I finally win the title or not, we will definitely be back for more seasons in Formula 1 97. Regardless, same as I want to go back and do more seasons in F1 95 as well, like there, I feel like an all dry season will be the ultimate challenge to try and beat that game but that is for the future as for right now we are still in a title fight in the real 97 qualifying Jean Alesi took his second and final career pole position three years after he'd taken his first pole which was also at Monza back when he drove for Ferrari but even though he was now in a Benetton the result was very popular with the fans at the track and that's good because Ferrari were not giving them much to cheer about otherwise. Michael Schumacher back in 9th and Eddie Irvine in 10th. Although an interesting fact worth noting, Schumacher was only 3 tenths away, in fact under 3 tenths away, from Hacken in 5th. So from 5th down to 9th, times were very close. Irvine, on the other hand, was 3 tenths away from just Schumacher. So there's a slight distinction there. I feel like I've been picking on Eddie Irvine a little bit <laughs> over the past few uh, rounds. And you know what, he does go on to have a very good season in 99, mounting a title challenge in Schumacher's absence. But it's fair to say in 1997, he's not quite up to speed yet. In the Panis playthrough, we got pole position there too. So it's the first time I think we've said it this season that Alacy got pole in real life, and last time we got pole. So really, the target it kind of writes itself it's it, we're gonna aim for the same thing again and in the dry i'm extremely confident we will do that in the wet it's gonna be interesting because i feel like in the wet your straight line speed not as good as you saw from the footage practice was wet and i'm glad of that because i got obviously a chance to practice in the wet um but also i'm hoping it means it's going to be less likely it will rain in the competitive sessions Maybe. Ooh. Okay. I don't think at any point from my memory we've had a fully wet weekend. I feel like there's always been a dry session thrown in there. If anyone can remember otherwise, um, I, 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 ugh. awesome. As mentioned previously in wet sessions, it's much more of a challenge to get it right in the wet in this game. It's actually a really fun little challenge. As you can see, coming to the end of lap 4, I still haven't put together a completely tidy lap. I was still going sideways through Parabolica, but I was at least able to finally get a time good enough to knock Damon Hill off provisional pole. But there was still plenty of time left on the table. But just a few corners later, I was reminded that the rain it's not the only hazard. <laughs> oh dear. That, um, yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, no more traffic and managed to get down into the 1 minute 32s, the high 32s. But this would be my fastest lap of the session. We head towards the Retifilio chicane, down to second gear. You're okay to still glance the curbs through these chicanes, which is good, which helps you flatten them out a little bit and carry a bit more speed through. I was worried you weren't able to use the curbs as much in the wet, but going through those chicanes, it's fine. Similarly, again into the Rose chicane, down to second gear. Again, attacking the curb on exit. A little bit of a slide there, but we're all right. Making sure the steering inputs are gentle, because that's when the back does come round. And my setup's pretty aggressive. I was happy to run this setup in the dry as well as the wet, so being very careful with the steering through the Lesmos. 
The times on screen, both set in the dry so not real yardsticks for us, as we approach the Ascari chicane in the end of Sector 2. We're going to be up by two and a half seconds. Again, gradually down to second gear through Ascari. This time we don't want to get on the curves because we're applying the power and turning the wheel. It's easy to then spin round in Ascari on those curves, so that time you want to keep it firmly on the tarmac. We head towards Parabolica, and again, the method for this is down to second gear, and keep it tight to the inside, gentle on the throttle and the steering. But as you can see, a little bit of a slide, slightly frustrating, as that does scrub off a bit of speed. The only real mistake I felt like I made in this lap. So, power up, towards the line, what's it going to be? Oh. And if I hadn't messed up Parabolica, I think that would have been 130, maybe even 129. Let's see how much the times drop. Did they drop? Is it pole? Yes! And we are ooh, over three seconds away from Schumacher. Schumacher in second. Panis third. Hill fourth. Berger fifth. Barrichello sixth. And again... The big sufferers are the Williams of Villeneuve and Frentzen. Villeneuve's ninth. He seems to end up ninth in the wet a lot. Frentzen in 11th. Okay. So less worried about our pace in the wet now after seeing that. Annoying Schumacher is there. But can we just talk about how Panis and Hill are having their own little scrap for sixth in the Drivers' Championship and on behalf of Prost and Arrows for fourth in the Constructors'. I'm loving that. What a side story I'd, we weren't expecting. In the real 1997 Italian Grand Prix, Jean Lacy was denied a second career win by David Coulthard, who picked up his second race win of the season, getting ahead of Lacy in the pit stops and coming home to win by just under two seconds. Villeneuve and Schumacher finished fifth and sixth respectively, making this the only race all season long when neither of them would feature on the podium. It's also a good time to roll out the probably now famous stat that even though these two were the main title protagonists, they never shared a podium all season long. In the Panis playthrough, we did end up winning, uh, but very nearly didn't. We had a collision with Jacques Villeneuve on lap two and had to fight our way back from 15th. Here, I am now a bit more relaxed and confident in our pace in the wet as much in the dry, regardless of what the weather is doing. The target is, is simple, I need to win. I was hoping that Schumacher would have a bit of a mare and be lower down. I just I just need to do everything I can do. What Schumacher does is irrelevant. If we can just eat back into that 11 point lead today, that is the, it's the most important thing. It is dry, it's not a full wet weekend. I'm gonna have to take a few laps to find the limit because I've not driven in the dry yet but the lights go out in Monza and as ever we're a bit sluggish off the line we dropped to fourth behind Hill bit tentative through Retifilio but we head up to Rosia for the first time it's Schumacher from Panis from Hill from Alesi Go on, Olivier, have a move. Try it. Oh, dear. I've overshot, and I'm going to let off the throttle. Oh, trying to find the limits in the dry again, realising that I can be a little bit more aggressive on the steering, and the back isn't going to suddenly spin round on me. I don't need to panic. I've got, I'm very comfortable with the pace. Oh, but Panis clearly being blocked off there by Schumacher. Okay, maybe I don't need to be too comfortable because obviously I don't want to lose Schumacher. In the slipstream, past the arrows. Whoa, I has it. Whoa, Damon! Wow. Not taking any responsibility for that, but oh my god. Christ. Damon Hill back in 18th. Oh, lots to unpack there, but for now. Oh, God. He's over 
Tegan Hecken. He's up on the leader and split one. Right, I really need to get my rhythm. Trying to find the limits in the dry in the pack is not the one. Right, run down to Parabolica. I'm going to go this side this time because I was firmly... Oh, gosh! Burger! What are you doing? Nearly sideswiped by my teammate. So incredibly, both arrows and both prosts were in the points until Hill and I had that collision. So it is Schumacher from Panis. Now there's a bit of a gap I need to work on trying to close down again. Why is it never straightforward in Monza? Oh my god, Schumacher's dropped again! What an opportunity we've got to get up there. This bit of space now allowing me just to try and find my limits again through these corners in the dry and the gap is coming down. Still go quicker through Retafilio, I just haven't found found it yet. That's it. That's Lesmo one and two. Down to third in the first one, just regulate the throttle in the second one. So close to the grass then, what a time. Very slowly reeling Schumacher in. What's the gap down to now? Under a second. That's it. Bit more aggressive through the first one. Big chance inside Curva Grande. Pedro Diniz is in the points. I was wrong about what I said about it being Panis and uh, Hill leading the way. Arrows and Prost, both drivers, in a big fight for fourth in the Constructors. But Damon Hill would be up there too, and I take no responsibility for that incident. On lap one, I was firmly alongside and he just kept drifting into me. In fact, it felt like it was my back wheel to his front wheel. So he could have just tucked in behind me and instead he's out the points and he's made my afternoon a bit more tense. But I'm hoping he's not ruined it. And it's a real shame because an Lacey Panis Hill podium ahead of Schumacher I would have gobbled that up thank you very much you're in my sights now Olivier and just like with Hill last year I don't particularly want to take the win off Olivier Panis but needs must at this point let's just do it in a way where no contact and he can hang on for second that is the ideal outcome. His lap time is quicker than the car he's chasing. I have noted that once again, even though the weather is set to random for this season and should only not change in the setup, the sky is getting darker. <laughs> What is happening? The gap is growing.
Race Order, Olivier Carnage, John Alesi, Michael Schumacher, Pedro Diniz. Fingers are still slightly crossed for a Pedro Diniz podium. I can't see it, but we can hope. But for now, I am struggling to reel in Panis. Olivier get back on the road and stay second <laughs> I was up the inside of Olivier Panis and I was just I needed to break I thought the move was done to be honest and then he just decided to hang it around the outside for me that's still on Panis no I feel like with that one Panis had room to the outside it could have easily hung it around the outside without the contact good news is Panis is still in second it's helped me build up a bit of a, a gap unfortunately incredibly it's raining again so Spa has done lasting damage to this game because now it's just ignoring my weather setting it shouldn't start changing weather in a single session but here we are in a 10 lap race, fortunately, it's it's not going to require a tyre change. Well, I knew coming into this race that this would be one we had a really good chance of winning and one that we had to win. But I also had a feeling it wasn't going to be straightforward, and it wasn't. But thank God. Keep the fight alive. Lacey wins at Monza. But my, that was not without some moments, wasn't it? Jesus. And it's a quite remarkable top six for the Italian Grand Prix. Jean Lacy wins by seven seconds from Olivier Panis. Panis was comfortably clear of Schumacher. Se ten seconds between them. And then Deniz nowhere near Schumacher, holding on ahead of Shinji Nakano, Gerhard Berger with another point. So the gap is now down to five points under a race win. So still on still tight still we're gonna go for it we've still got the chance it's more detrimental for Villeneuve though no points scored he is now 20 behind Michael Schumacher and 15 behind us still five rounds to go uh, if you think I'm doing bad maths remember this season does include the Portuguese Grand Prix that was never run so we've got that in the mix here we've got five rounds left also should be noted, no points for Frentzen either, but Olivier Panis' second place means he's up ahead of Gerhard Berger. We're not even thinking about Eddie Irvine versus Gerhard. The Irvine's gone. Literally, Panis, Berger and Hill would be there as well if he'd not had that incident. In the Constructors, <laughs> yes! Oh, could it be? Could we finally win our first ever Constructors' Championship in one of these playthroughs? Thanks to the double points finish, and only Schumacher scoring Benetton lead by two points from Ferrari. Williams scoring nothing. Still in the fight as a team, though. In the fight for fourth, Prost extend their advantage over Arrows from four points to nine points. Pedro Diniz getting some vital points today to keep them in the fight, but... It does come back to Hill. Hill has been a superstar for Arrows so far this season. But today he definitely left three or four points on the table. Up next, another circuit that it could literally go either way. It's not like it's it's a circuit where there's lots of corners where the air are quicker. It's not like Monza where we seem to have the advantage over the course of the lap. It's very evenly matched. We are off to Austria for what was then called the A1 ring. This was Austria's return to Formula One in the 90s. Oh, it's close. It's going to be very, very close. I have no idea how this is going to play out. 
but we will find out very very soon thank you so so much for watching very glad we got that victory had to be done vital win gap down to five points off to a truck where again we can eat into the lead or Schumacher could start pulling away it's gonna need to need some practice for this one I have to nail this see you soon